<clears throat> Aloha and Tashi Delay from Kauai Tibetan Buddhist Dharma Center here on the island of Kauai in Hawaii. We present this class every Thursday night, six to eight, and Zoom it, and then record it on our website, kauaidharma.org. I'm Lama Tashi. In the Tibetan tradition, people say, well, why, why do we do so many different kinds of practices? And why are there so many lamas giving all these different kinds of teachings? And I said, well, the universe does that. The, the universe is an energy program. And it's, it's a good to think that we're the energy eaters because we are. And so the energy of the Dharma is a special kind of energy because it's, it's, it's about wisdom. It's about states of higher intelligence. And it's about loving kindness and concern for the well being of others. It's about taking care of our environment and deleting anything that is not in harmony with the Lama's teachings and with the universe itself. And if you get that, then everything you do is, a, is an energy program to be in harmony with what already exists and is going on around you in this lovely world. And so when we speak of consciousness, we use the term semchen. It means the mind of a sentient being. And semchens fill the universe, sentient beings. And all of them have this mind. And the mind is like boss. It's like your computer. What you when you put a an a logarithm, a program on your computer, it's it's what you want to see on the computer. Well, that's the way the mind is. And somehow, some way, at least on this planet, the mind has evolved into um a category called judgment. As, as one Lama said, judgmental mind. And this judgmental mind that the humans on this planet have, animals, humans, spirit, is not in harmony with the program of the universe. So the Dharma two words, Dharma, wisdom mother, is, is to take the energy of your mind and transform it into a program that is in harmony with the already existing world and the beings in it. And so that's this program. And all the information that I have comes down to my teacher, Lama Kala Rinpoche and Lama Rinchen. Now, Lama Rinchen passed away about three days ago in a hospital on Maui at 91. And he was, it was peaceful. And his, his advice is to, oh, always stay in the middle. A lot of you have this book, The Story of All of Us, which is a compilation, a knowledge of all of his teachings over 47 years. But that one little publication, The Story of All of Us simply said, has everything you need to progress to this state of 
harmonious interaction with yourself, others, and the world around you. In fact, I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of copies we put out, but when I started getting them from Lama Rinchen, he says, oh, you like that, huh? And I said, oh yeah, this is very good for, for all of your students. And he says, well, memorize it. <laughs> I said, well, I think I have most of it in my mind just from knowing you all these years. And then my relationship with Lama Rinchen is 47 years. Wow. And so when we when we do these practices, one has their mic on. And one mic is still on. Uh, when we do these practices, especially tonight, we're going to do two practices. One of them is a sutra practice called consciousness transference or POA, and we'll use the text and Omani Pay Me Home Mantra with that one. And the other one is this tanka on my right, which I use for um, Chen Rei Z practice and Vajrasattva. This was presented by the Dalai Lama in Hollywood, California, over a four day retreat in the, uh, a they call it a palace, a place where they give the Oscar. And several thousand people received this empowerment over a period of three days with the Lama, all the Lamas present, and, and, and the Dalai Lama, Tenzin Gyatso, presiding and giving the action. He was the one that gave the teachings and the empowerment and through his translator. And even Trungpa Rinpoche attended this particular occasion. But I want you to know that Lama Rinchen took me and my Dharma sister, girlfriend, Jaldi, to LA for this special teaching of Chen Rezi from the Dalai Lama. And um, every day he, uh, Lama Rinchen was sitting right next to the Dalai Lama while all of this was going on. And when they got all through the retreat, they gave us a little card with this picture on it, about this big. So what started off as something little like this, this is it. It's from that picture. We blew it up with a special machine that we borrowed from the military called the wax printer, which they used to print their maps for war games. And we ran all our little talk of pictures through that machine. And I still have many of them you see in this class. But that was all a result of Lama Rinchen taking us to see the Dalai Lama in Hollywood, California, of all places. So that's the story that goes with tonight's class. And I don't know how many of you can see that Lama Rinchen's right here. <laughs> he sits on a lotus sun and moon seat on top of my head. And so I'm very happy that he's in Day Watch In right now. And you know what? When you're in Day Watch In, you can be anywhere in the universe in an instant. So all of you out there that need special assistance at any time or have problems, 
Just call longer Ridge. He'll be right there. He's, he's, he's the best. In order to attain enlightenment for ourselves and limitless sentient beings, our mothers, we now all together take refuge and offer prostration. We go for refuge to all the glorious holy lamas. We go for refuge to all the items and deities gathered in our mandala. We go for refuge to all the Buddhas, those who have conquered their mind and gone beyond. We go for refuge to all the supreme Dharma. We go for refuge to all the noble Sangha. And we go for refuge to all the Dakas and Dakinis who are the protectors and defenders of the Dharma. All of these possess the eye of transcending awareness. Then we do the Bodhisattva prayer. <clears throat> to the Buddha, Dharma, and this Supreme Assembly, we go for refuge. May I, through back <clears throat> to, <clears throat> excuse me, may, may I, through the merit gained from practicing the six Bodhisattva discipline called the six perfections, accomplish Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. The first prayer, the altruistic motivation, I'll chant that to invite all the spirits to join our program tonight. Dagdang go on, I'm gay, Dagdang, young day, Sam Jim, Tom Jay, do the name, Zoom day, GC, Chang Zhu, Ning Po, Bardu. Then we chant together in Sanskrit the refuge prayer. Alden Lama Dampa Nam La Jatsu Shio Yedam Jokor Gilacho Nam La Jatsu Shio Chanje Chong Dende Nam La Jatsu Shio don't pay on the chapsu shield. Don't pay gandum on the chapsu shield. Don't go choke young sume. Show ye shaky shend on the pop. Sanjay, Buddha, these two words mean the same thing. Buddha is a new age term for Sanjay, which is the old age term for a mature human being who has com completely cleared their, their mind of emotional involvement with themselves and the world around them. So it's actually two words, cleared completely of emotional defilement. In common terms, we use the mind as reference and the mind has two natures and the the nature we know, I call the drama nature, is I, that you believe that you exist as an entity, as a self, independent or separate from all other beings and the environment around you. You believe that. You think that. And that one defective form of thinking causes you not to be cleared completely. And when you don't, when you have this selfless aspect of consciousness installed through bodhicitta, 
through the Maya, Mahayana and Tantriana traditions and with the guidance of the Lamas, then what's left? Well, it's way too simple to put into words. It's too close, it's too profound, it's too perfect, it's too precious. And it's Sanjay. It's it's Buddhahood. It's it's your true it's your true nature. And and what it is is a complete disappearance of selfless, selfish mind. And all of the emotional programs that go with that, negative programs, harmful programs, conflicting programs. And that, those programs are that way because of that thought causing us to have judgmental minds. Now, a, long, a young Lama came in this, to, to Kauai and gave teachings many, it was about 30, 40 years ago. And we did a Mahamudra retreat with him. And when we got all through, I asked him if he could put into turn the simplest teaching of, on Mahamudra. And, and he says, well, yeah, that's easy. He says, Conflicting mind, drama mind, whatever you want to call that selfish nature, is judgmental mind. And if you can get rid of the judgment out of your thinking and your talk, your talking, the result is you don't need to think. You don't have to have the obscuration of the judgment, which with the thinking, causes the conflicting emotions to activate. And then that whole program becomes a habitual thing. And so you have this judgmental mind thinking and habitually reacting to what is thinking and judging. So I says, well, where do you start? He says, get a judgment. Get a non-judgmental mind. And he says, once you have your non-judgmental mind, you can change the program and become aware. You can wake up. And, and when you see, when, when we do, like this Mahamudra retreat, it's all about waking up. And, and he says, to be awake means to be present in the human body. Now I can say 100% Lama Richard was always present in the human body. I know this firsthand because I've been his friend. He's been my spiritual friend for 40, 45 years, since 1977. And before him, Colin Rinpoche, perfect present, but totally non judgmental. And, and that's way too simple. You know, people are going crazy with their judgmental mind. This whole planet's going berserk, it's off the charts. And it's, it's a beautiful planet. And it should be a beautiful place to take birth and enjoy life. And if you have really good karma, connect to the Dharma and become a mature human being. Like our teachers. All the men and women who give the guidance of how to move gently, 
slowly, deliberately, mindfully, and become more and more aware, more and more intelligent, not smart. I'm not smart. But intelligence is a different program than being a smarty. And if you get that, life's a lot easier. From the moment you start to move from the judgmental nature to the non judgmental, from the relative. To the ultimate, and and when we use the word ultimate, the, judge, the relative is very constricted. The selfish nature is very constricted. The ultimate has no boundary. It's simply space and light. The energy of the universe, the energy of your mind, the energy of your thoughts. It's in your food. It's in the clothes you wear. It's in everything. It's in the sky, the sun and moon and stars. It's everywhere. And that's really what you're taking refuge in. Because it already exists. And it's innate. All sentient beings have this ability to be what they really are, Buddhas. So with that, we'll start the practice tonight. And we're going to do the Chen Rei Zi practice in two ways. One in the tantric way, the way the Dalai Lama presented it over four days, is about the five Dhyana Buddha families. But but not as Buddha, not as fully mature. As 10th level bodhisattvas, which is what Chen Rezi and Tar, the two male and female aspects of the Mahayana energy program and the Tantric program, Tantrayana, Vajrayana, is that As a bodhisattva, you're in action. Buddhists don't act. The activity of the Buddha is the Dakini energy training program that does all the action of what is appropriate and beneficial to appear, to take place. Dharma centers, stupid, training programs, retreats, 40 month retreats. All of this, and now we're do, doing all, all the lamas like here in Hawaii are doing the Zoom program using the internet, which is not a healthy form of communication. I say that because the way they're communicating is deepening the illusion and the emotional conflict. But with the Dharma, it can be transformed away from the dark side and bring light because the internet is a program of space and light. It's, it's energy. And the way the Dalai Lama put it is the action part of the Buddha nature is the bodhisattva. In action, in a human body, male or female. And so the way he taught it, taught it is we have a five jewel crown as a bodhisattva. Five jewel crown. That's the five Dhyana Buddhas, the five energy fields that we are becoming more aware, healthy, 
intelligent. And these five have the bodhisattvas in action. And so what he taught was the central one is Chen Rezi, who is the bodhisattva of compassion, power, and insight in union with the red Tara, Pema Khandro, in her wrathful form, as everything that you imagine and everything you see with your eyes. She is the generator. She's the Dakini. She's the action. He's the method. And these two are inseparable. They're in union. So whether when we start into the Mahayana or Tantrayana practices, either one is appropriate. But for some humans, one is better than the other because of the ten tendencies that each of us has is different. We're all equal. Gods, goddesses, humans, animals, spirits, equal. But all of us have different tendencies, so we have to be trained in different ways to get to, to, get to understand our true nature and how to use it. And so what he, the Dalai Lama says, we start with this as the center here in your heart. Then out here in the four directions, we influence the world around us with a blue Chen Rezi and a blue Gondo, Dakini and Union in front. And in the, this direction, we have gold or yellow. Okay. Tara Chenrezi. Behind us, we have a red Chenrezi and a white Khandra Dakini, just the opposite of the two in the middle. And then in the northern or the, this direction, we have green. And he says, those codes of those Bodhisattva figures are all connected to the five Diana Buddhas, but each of them are using their energy in a different way because of the beings that fall into those directions or categories. And there's a whole big teaching about all of that, but we're not doing just the teaching of one Chen Rezi. We're doing the teaching of five Chen Rezis in union with five Dakinis, wrathful, powerful Dakini, the action Dakini. The mantra is based on the two arm Chen Rezi, which we're going to do later with Powa. And that mantra is Omani Pay Me Hum as the white Chen Rezi. Then Duma Gaya is the consort. So Omani pay me home Duma Gaya. That's it? Or in Nisa? Well, we, yeah, you want me to give the whole? Oh, okay, yeah, we'll give the whole teaching because the Dalai Lama did, but it took five days. So in this direction, this is Hara. Nisa, Racha, Kriye, Soha, everywhere. Omani pay me Omani pay me home. Dumagaya. Ara, Nisa, Racha, Kriye, Soha. Soha means everywhere this takes place in the heart of every sentient being in the universe. In action, we're all in action to make this universe, day watch in, the mind of bliss, perfect, healthy, exciting, wonderful, fun. And that's the way it is for people that practice. I'm telling you this from my own and that is experience. <laughs>
We're having fun. Okay. And right now, because of this situation on the planet today, we're, we have the time to do a lot of good practice. With the guidance of our teachers, right here. All we have to do is call their names. All we do is chant the lineage. You know, the Dalai Lama, Lama Richard, Lama Kala Rinpoche, Lama Karmapa, Padma Sambhava, Padma Sambhava, Yeshe Soigal, Dhammalar, any Lama you can think of, any lineage you want to run. Lama Norbo. Tilopa Naropa, Marpa Melaretha, <laughs> Hey Guma Sukhasiddhi, Guma Naljor. Hey Guma. As soon as you say those names, they, they're in your presence. Energy. You don't have to believe this. You will experience it if you practice. You know? Hearing the teachings, reading the teachings, great. We do that a lot too. Like tonight. But performing the teaching with your body, speech, and mind, that's the practice. And staying present is what these practices train you to do. It's not ordinary beings' way of existence to be present. They're just not doing that. Their body's doing one thing, Speech is doing one another thing, and the mind is doing something else. And if you don't think that, go to a party of human beings. <laughs> go into a bar. <laughs> okay, that's enough. So we'll do this. The modified. This, this, this is the tantric version condensed from the Dalai Lama's teachings. The way Lama Risha said, the best way is to present, show the Taka, give the seed syllable free. You don't need to know all the different seed syllables of the, the different um, Bodhisattvas and Dakinis. This one will do it. This is the free. Okay. And it's in the heart center of all the deities. It's in red, in a white background with a blue outer sphere and it's enclosed in a five color sphere and your heart center is about the size of your thumb. It is the energy vibration code of Chenrezig as Amitabha Buddha. And it simply means infinite light. And that's the nature of everything in the universe, including your thoughts. Om Ma Ni Pe Mi Hum. So that takes all sentient beings in Dumagaya, Buddha activity for all those sentient beings. Then help. Para Nisa Racha Pri Ye Soha. So how it's Spaha in Sanskrit. Everywhere in an instant. Always increasing. So let's try this. First we'll just be Chen Rezi. Back straight, mind, eyes open, mouth closed, hands in comfortable position. I like the mudra of Amitabha Buddha. Head slightly tilted forward. Focus to your breath. Inhale white light into your lungs. Hear the sound OM. The energy of the universe entering into you as the five elements spreads through every cell in your body. You hear the sound AH, the 
color of my shirt. Exhale the code of those two vibrations, ohm and ah, white and red. Out your nose is blue light with the sound, home. The infinite healing potential of all of the Buddha's teaching, home. Oh, inhale. Absorption breath. Oh. Both together out the nose. Exhale. Oh. Oh, my knee. Now at this point you're just Chen Rei Z. Two arms, white in color, five jewel crown, Mala in the right hand, lotus in the left hand. Sitting in full lotus posture and a lotus sun and moon seat, which is a symbol of taking birth as the deity in the human condition only to benefit sentient beings with the Dharma, like Lama Rinchi. Three D radiant light from the Hri, red Hri in your heart center, blasting through you, healing energy and out into space. And you think all sentient beings that you have karma with, family, friends, lovers, enemies, pets, spirits, all of these sentient beings are the deity, Chen Rei Zi. So the hurry is the creation sound of this infinite mandala you're creating. All beings in the universe, infinite in number, generate Z. Then add the action red, they say Kondro in Tibetan, Dakini, this one. And she has a knife and skull cup behind Chen Rei Zi's hand. She's a full, what do you say, wrathful Dakini. They're the action Dakinis of the red tar. Now you're visualizing these two in sexual union. And they, again, they're everybody you have karma with, all your past lives, this life, throughout the universe, all the humans and animals, wherever they take birth on wherever, what, whatever planet, and all the four spirit realms that fill the entire universe, 
heaven to hell and in between. All these two deities. Now we're going to fill in the other eight bodhisattvas in union. Ara, Nisa, Racha, Kriya, Soha. So when we do this, do a little bit slower and give you the color code. Ara, blue. Ara, Nisa, gold or yellow. Behind you, Racha, she is white and he is red, just the opposite of the two in the middle. Kriye, green. So this is east, south, west, and north. And these are the color codes of the five Buddha realms of the five Dhyana Buddhas in the action mode of the Bodhisattva. That's us. Now, all together, you say all 10 deities. Om Ani Padme Hum Jumagaya Ara Nisa Racha Kriya Soha Om Ani Padme Hum Jumagaya Jumagaya Ara Nisa Racha Kriya Soha Ara, Nisa, Racha, Kriye, Soha, Omani, Bebe, Ho, Jumagaya, Ara, Nisa, Racha, Kriye, Soha, Omani, Bebe, Ho, Jumagaya, Ara, Nisa, Racha, Kriye, Soha, Jumagaya, Hara, Nisa, Racha, Kriya, Soha, Omani, Bebe, Ho. Jumagaya, Hara, Nisa, Racha, Kriya, Soha, Blue. And blue is east. Gold. South is red. Now, south is gold. Behind you is red and white. But red is the predominant for west. That's the Amitabha Buddha realm. And then green. north is green. Okay, so this, if you say the Buddha energy field, the one in front is Aksavaya. <coughs> the one in the south is Ratnasambhava. The one behind is, we say, um, Amitabha. Amitabha. And the one in the north is Amoga City. And the one in the middle is Bhairokana. So these are the five Diana Buddha views according to this chart. And all this activity that you see on both sides of this chart is the action of these. Bodhisattvas, us, we're the action humans through our practice. 
and through our psychic energy of the power of our imagination and focus, it becomes a reality. The actual and the imagined are the same thing. It's all space and light. But with compassion, power, and insight of the Lama as the deity inseparable, you have assistance. You have help with this. It's not, it's not you on your own doing these practices. Call Lama Rinchen. He's right here. Okay? This is Lama Rinchen speaking. This is Lama Rinchen sitting. That's all. Lamas come, Lamas go away. Don't be happy or sad. That's just what, what we do. Lyra told me the other day that she was reading a book by Padma Sambhava and that he said, when someone calls on me with a sincere heart, I have to come. That's right. I have to. That's right. <laughs> If somebody calls me, I have to help them. <laughs> That's our commitment. That's our samaya. And your, your commitment as samaya is to take that loving kindness, compassion with their power of their energy and their insight and use it, be it. Okay? It's who you really are. And you don't have to believe. You don't have to be, oh, yay God and all that. No, there's no high and low. There's no good or bad. There's no inside or outside. There's no separation. Oh, my name, me, oh, you, my guy. Paranisa Rancha Rie So A Omane Beme Ho Dumagai Paranisa Rancha Rie So A Omane Beme Ho Dumagai Paranisa Rancha Rie So A Oh, Mane Bame Hong, Dumagai, Haranisa, Racha Priye, Soha. Oh, Mane Bame Hong, Dumagai, Haranisa, Racha Priye, Soha. Oh, Mane Bame Hong, Dumagai, Haranisa. Racha Rie Soha, O Mane Bame Hong, Dumagaya, Haranisa, Racha Rie Soha, O Mane Bame Hong, Dumagaya, Haranisa, Racha Rie Soha, O Mane Bame Hong, to my guy, Haranisa, Racha, Rie Soha, O Mane Bame Hong, to my guy, Haranisa, Racha, Rie Soha. When you create this mandala, you can never again be alone. Infinite sentient beings are going to be around you, in and out of you, far into the future. And when you reach the 10th level, 
action mode of a bodhisattva. You'll throw time in the garbage can and adopt the nature of timeless awareness. And at the end of your practice session, take the 10 dot, we call bodhisattvas, the center one and the, the other two in the four direction. <clears throat> Bring them all into the three in your heart center. So all, all the bodhisattvas and their consort the Dakinis, all at once, dissolve into your heart center, your heart mind, the foundation of loving kindness and concern for the well beings is called altruistic compassion. Then with the three you enter into the realm of Amitabha Buddha, the mind of the Lama as infinite light, the energy of boundless space, the energy of everything. And sit with that. Completely open, clear, no need for judgment, open to the Dharmakaya, the great expanse of the Dharma energy throughout space, naked, be present, nothing to add, nothing to take away. and awake. With the natural mind of awareness. And completely non judgmental to whatever your body's telling you, or your thoughts in your mind, which never stop rattling on.
then when you arise from this <clears throat> second part of the practice, which is developing presence, it's called the accomplishment stage, then you again adopt the body of a deity, whichever one you are working with, with your mama's advice or your, or your practice. And that's for in between your formal session. <clears throat> you keep that one mindfully while you're playing or working in the world in your human condition. And all sound is the mantra of whatever deity is your yidam. And that pacifies the sound and helps to remove the judgment and shock of harsh vibrations or sound, whether it be from other humans, animals, or the environment. Mindfulness is developed through these practices until your mindfulness is 24-7. And more and more you abandon judgmental thinking. And at some point, it seems that even the thoughts themselves disappear. And awareness takes its place. And that is Sanjay. That's your true nature functioning in the human condition. And that's why we say it's too easy, it's too close. It's too profound, it's too perfect, it's too simple. To be who you really are. Okay, now we're going to do the second part of the Chen Rei Z practice tonight, which is <clears throat> the highest tantric yoga practice of the six, six types of Meguma and or the six types of Talopa. They're similar. And it's called Powa or consciousness transference, which is useful at the moment of leaving the body what we call death. But it actually, its true name in Tibetan is deathless yoga. So, I'm going to take this talk up. And we're going to do the Chen Rei Zi practice in its simplest form as two arm with no consort. And this is what the lamas do when they leave the body. They don't go anywhere. They don't go 
to nirvana. They go beyond nirvana. And remain available in the worlds of existence throughout the universe in a state of no separation. And so Chenrezig Two Arm is simply the mantra, Omani Pay Me Home. Right hand holds the mala for the tantric symbol. Left hand holds the lotus for the symbol of taking birth in the human condition out of compassion for humans. Five colors of silks is the five elements of the, we say the female energy that creates everything in the universe. Five jewel crowns. In a natural setting, surrounded by light and sitting on a lotus sun and moon seat. And directly in front is an empty mirror, which is the nature of what Chen Rezi does with the mind. He transforms it into a mirror that can reflect everything, but none of it gets past the mirror into the ultimate nature of consciousness we call awareness. White halo here, sun and moon in the sky, mountains, hills, lakes, beaches, everything beautiful around him, sky, Of your mind. Now again, we're going to do the three, the C syllable, and we're going to sound it ten times. The first three is to bring your body, speech, and mind into union for the practice, into focus, all in the same energy program. The second four is have that energy pro program bring, develop in you your best qualities for bodhisattva activity. And then the last three, he, three, three sound is the Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, and Nirmanakaya of the mind of the Lama as your mind. And this is the Bodhisattva field of the red Amitabha Buddha. Sit with your back straight, eyes open, mouth closed, hands comfortable, head slightly tilted. Sound three, heat, three. Spelled H R I. Three, 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 and four to bring out your qualities for your body, speech, and mind. Three, 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 three. That's yes, through your practice. And the final three, three is the results. The Dharmakaya, the Sobhogakaya, and the Ramanakaya is the mind of the Lama. These three kayas are the ultimate nature of non judgmental mind. Three times. Three, three, three. And visualizing the one in your heart center and about the size of your thumb is the mind of the Lama projected into you from his three places, white light from the Lama's head into your head, red light from the Lama's throat into your throat, 
and blue light from the Lama's heart chakra into your heart center. With these three energy centers now open in you, you see the three lights shining simultaneously with the sounds OM in your forehead, AH in your throat, and HOME in your heart center. Then the Lama melts into you like water into water. This is the empowerment of the union of the body, speech, and mind of the Guru and your body, speech, and mind in sync, in union. Then the three lights in, in you become one. The white OM moves down the central channel into the red AH. Those two together move down into the blue OM, which is universal ultimate healing. And that vibration changes into the tree, the Buddha field of infinite light of Amitabha. And that's your action field of discerning awareness. Discerning that condition existence is not appropriate. And Bodhisattva, unconditional mind is the replacement. Same situation. Then you become the two arm Chenrei Z as shown here, three dimensional. Rainbow body made of light, like a hologram. And you project that to your mother in front, she becomes Chen Rezi. She made you. Then father, friends, relatives, lovers, pets, every animal human you have karma with on this planet. Chen Rezi. And you project it to the four spirit world. The two heavenly realms and the two lower realms of the demonic spirit, all Chen Rezi. So now the whole universe is the mandala of the deity. No one left out. This causes the mantra to sound in your heart center of six syllables. Om, Ma, Ni, Pe, Ni, Hum. Each syllable represents the emotional conflicting energy of that realm of sentient beings. One for the heavens, one for the war god, demigod, one for the deprived spirits, one for the hell realm, and then two more for the animals and human world. So those are the only six that are conflicted. And when you sound this mantra, all their negative tendencies start to dissipate and their minds reprogram as the deity, as the sound free Amitabha and all beings equal as the deity. Rainbow body, illusory body. Om Mani Pe Ni Hum. If you have a mala, we're going to count one round of the mala, which is 108. Om Mani Pe Ni Hum. Amen. 
Now to perform the consciousness transference, which you can do as a daily practice, it only needs to be performed or activated no more than seven times daily, one session. And the Buddha it, Amitabha is the place of your root lama above your head here. He's red in color, wears the robes of a lama, and hands in this mudra, right on top of left thumb's touching. So the tree that was in your heart center is also in the heart center of this Buddha of infinite light. That's what he symbolizes. So now the whole universe is that Dharma realm, which is actually true. But you're imagining it as boundless space full of light with this Buddha as your root Lama sitting here. Then the mantra you were sounding in your heart it has a shri in the middle. Sound the Shri two times and put a Shri in front of each eye. It can be just the Shri or in a little five colored sphere, but it's good, just a red Shri, just like this. Shri, Shri. Then one, one in front of each nostril. Three, three, then one in front of your mouth. Three, then for men. Did you do ears? Huh? Ears. Oh, one in front, of, one in blocking each ear. Thank you. Three, three. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three. Then for men, two more blocking the two lower orifices the sex chakra and the anus, and for women, three degrees. So men have now nine degrees blocking, women have 10. Then you bring your focus back to the red degree in your heart center, and sound that degree while watching it Move up the central channel and into the merge with the Sri in the heart of Amitabha Buddha. In 
when you do that, you make this sound. It's, it's, it's spelled H-R-I-K. Or you can say it slowly. And you sound the ah, oh, the sound of energy. Ah, oh, and see the free coming back down into your heart center and see it firmly back in place. Again. Free. Now your Amitabha Buddha, infinite light is the energy of everything in space, the universe. Then um, the three comes back down, settles in your heart chakra. That's two times. Again. Uh, again, focus on the three. Do it fast, move it right up there. And return slowly uh, down through your Uma channel, down through your throat chakra, and settle right back into your heart chakra in the center of your chest. Again. Really? This will be the sixth time. Focus. One more time. Focus. Now with this one, the Buddha Amitabha disappeared. The free disappears. You're in space. The totality of space. Then you take the energy of that. Uh, recreate the free and drop it into your heart center. Feel it solid right there in the center of your heart chakra. Then again, the Buddha Amitabha appears in your heart center with the free in its heart center. Then remove the blockages of your eight outer orifices. The two lower ones come into the center into your heart. Three, three. Oh, three, three, three. Huh? And then the two from your ears, three, three. And the one from your mouth, three. And two from your nose, three, three. And the two from your eyes, three, three. Then that three disappears. This one is the completion of the Powa practice. 
and you just sit as you did with dissolving the deity in the mantra recitation, present in the energy field of Amitabha Buddha of boundless light. And if you want, you can say that Buddha's mantra or not. Om Amitabha Deva Kri. 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 Oh, Ami Tava Deva Kri. Then you just rest and be present in a boundless energy field of light. No center, no circumference, no boundary. And this energy field is called Dewa Chen, Mind of Bliss. Non-judgmental in nature.
Then he reappears, Chen Rei Z, two arms or forearm, according to your practice. And you project that to all beings and all sound is the mantra, O Mani Pemi Hom, or O Mami Tabe Dewa Hri. When you do Powa, and you project your consciousness with the Hri into space, do not leave the consciousness in space. That's a separate practice. When you connect to space in the Mahamudra way, you connect through your heart chakra. This space is the space of the Dharmakaya, which is the, <clears throat> we say, the mind of the Lama as they watch in this nature of everything. And when you leave the body, then you stay in this space. This becomes the all pervasive nature called the great view. So always return with the three back into your heart center. And remember to remove the three blockages from the nine or ten orifices. Other than that, if you perform this practice seven times, no, no more at least three times, but seven times is recommended each day. You can do it any place, any time. You can do it in, at night when you wake up, or you can do it in the daytime, in your car, or at the beach, anytime. It doesn't have to be formal. What about doing it for others, like when our cat died? When you get proficient at POA, usually it takes many sessions. For instance, Lama Tarchin used to come to Hawaii and we had POA retreats, which lasted four days. And we did this practice over and over, <clears throat> morning, afternoon, and evening for four days. And what happens when you do this in a retreat situation, because you're doing it so much with the Lama's guidance, the Uma channel towards the back of your head, which, which is the soft spot that forms when you're a baby, that softens up. And, it, and it start, it, sometimes it gets a little liquid. But in the retreat on the fourth day, everybody had a little, went up to the Lama and he put a little stick in each person's head. That's amazing. And there was about 30 people in the retreat and we all were walking around with this stick. <laughs> it happened for everyone? Uh, wow. Everybody, Got it. everybody accomplished the, the POA. That shows that you accomplished it, but you don't need to do that. If, if you perform this, three to seven times a day for several months, it'll come at naturally at the moment of death. If you do a performance, like I had to perform it for our pets that died here and other human beings, usually Dharma brothers and sisters, um, they have sign that it worked. And what you do is you see the person as Shen Rei Z, whether they're breathing or not, the Hri in their heart center, and then you just say, Omani Bami Om, Omani Bami Om, Omani Bami Om. And then, 
See, they're, you don't you don't have to say it out loud because they're they're gone. They might not still be in the body, but their consciousness, remnants of consciousness, persist in the body after death. For Lama, sometimes three days, four days, or longer. But in any case, beep, one time. And you, 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 there will be some sign, but even if there's no sign, um, that's all you need to do. You, you can do it two or three times, but usually, beep, you see the life force of the animal or human go into space. Why space? Because that's the mother element. That's where you came from. That's what you, the mother created space for you before the other elements entered into your form. The universe is the mother. So that's how it works. I was trying to remember how we knew it worked with the cat. We both knew that it worked. Well, Abby's psychic, so that helped. <laughs> but there was some sign, too. I no, there was some movement. Yeah. yeah. So powerful. Yeah. But we know it worked for our two cats and our dog. We know that. And I, when I and Lama Rinchen used to go where people were dying, we performed the poa, and he, he would check them. He would check the eyes to see if they were bloodshot, open the eyelid, or pinch the skin to make sure that it stayed up when you pinch it, or check the soft spot at the top of the head and show maybe a little blood or some moisture. Huh. But, it's one of the six yo advanced yogas of De Guma in our lineage, the Shanka lineage, and Tilopa in the Karmakagya lineage. And all, all the lamas know how to, are trained in this and, and giving this as a teaching. Pola go, goes when your five elements start to, 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 to disappear. For instance, Lama Rinchen knew because his kidney failed, kidneys fail. Well, that's the water element. If the liver fails, that's the fire element. If the lungs fail, that's the air element. So you, you know what's going on as you, the five elements. When it, usually you can't eat, then that's the earth going into the water. Then you can't drink or take water. Then the water element goes into the fire element, then your temperature is uncontrollable. Hot and cold fluctuating. Or maybe just terribly cold or one or the other. And then the fire element disappears into the space element. At that moment for ordinary beings, I mean into the air element, when the air element goes into the space element, you can't breathe. That's when you, they leave the body. Then your natural mind and your drama mind are together at that moment. And if you can recognize the awareness nature, then we call it the non judgmental, then, then you're in day watch in. Then the bardo, the next life, whatever you want to call it, becomes bodhisattva training school, simple. Then from bodhisattva training school, back into the human condition, somewhere in the universe, <laughs> some planet, some place. But usually it's with the same group that you perform with this life. Like you see your mother, father again, you see lovers again, you see certain pets again. And and you'll know that they you've had 
karma with him before. So, the six yogas are the deity practice, all the deity practices, sutra tantra practices. And the practice of Tumo are the two for the body when you're doing deity yoga. So if you can do Tumo practice along with your deity yoga, in Tibet it was almost mandatory because it was so cold there. Then the two for the sleep stage is the clear light of sleep, which means to do Amitabha mantra as you go to sleep or your Yeda mantra or connect to your teacher or the symbol of space, something like that. That's clear light yoga of sleep. Then the dream stage is to negate the drama of the dream stage by waking up and canceling it. Dis disappear. And if, if, if you have a, if can perform a mantra practice in the dream state, that's called ultimate dream yoga. Those two go together. Clear light of sleep and dream yoga practice. Then the last two are the five elements disappearing one by one and then doing poa at the moment of leaving the body. Those are the six yogas. I, they say advanced yoga. The ones we teach outside of retreat are the deity yoga and the uh, tumo, fire mother practice. And then sleep, we don't teach dream yoga outside of retreat, except to cancel the dream upon awakening because it's just a drama. And then some lamas teach the five elements to dissipation practice, which is very similar to the five elemental healing practice, but recognizing your body as it shutting down Earth into water, water into fire, fire into air, into space. And then at the moment, the breath stops. It'll happen spontaneously if you've done the POA. So we do teach POA practice outside of retreat. But if you have a Lama doing a POA retreat, like we did here in Hawaii, very powerful, you'll know that there won't be any problem when you're ready to die. Then it'd be okay. Abby says, infinitely okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the sutra text for the Chen Rei Z practice, which Lama Rinchen set up for us, a short version, but If you could just do the mantra, O Mani Pemi Hom, the rain, your heart center, and be the deity and see all beings as the deity. Just that, tantric practice, gives, it gives powerful result. Non judgmental mind starts to disappear. And over a period of weeks or months, you keep doing the practice. After a while, you'll notice you're not making judgments about anything. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. It sucks. <laughs> you'll have revulsion for it, actually. You know? <coughs> and you'll be mindful of what you say, that there's no judgment in your speech. Oh, that's good, or that's bad, or that's happy, or that's sad. Or that's outside, or that's inside, or that's yesterday, and that's tomorrow, or that's high and divine, and this is low and awful. 
like religions do. Not necessary. Judgmental mind delete. As long as it says, O Mani, pay me home and free. May all your chakras shrink with glee from the ocean to the sea. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, free. He said that. Ah.ではでにるるだ。ちょいやちゃんぽじゅじゅね。とまちんぺんはるか。でいさらごぱしょ。さんじいくしゅんでんぱいじゅまだ。ちょうにめぐるでんぱいじゅまだ。へんてみ
I, the supreme image of the Sagana, I re repent my present vices. I vow now to repeat negative ways herefore. Hereafter, I rejoice in all virtue and merit of others, and I pray that you, the host of the victorious ones, Lama Rinchen and so forth, will not pass into nirvana, but remain here in this world to turn the wheel of the incomparable Dharma and preach the Dharma. I dedicate my accumulated merit to the generations of beings so that all beings reach the supreme level of liberation as Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and may they, all, may they all pay heed to the Lama's teachings. May this excellent prayer which I am teaching in which I am speaking, teach me to follow all those who understand all things like Lama Rishin and all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. May the precious song of which is the foundation of the doctrine be enriched with harmony, pure discipline, and practice, and attain the three types of training and quickly become Buddha. May those who perfected the secret teachings, the tantra, the essence of the doctrine, keep sacred vows and realize the stages of development and accomplishment. May all beings be free. May all beings be liberated. And may all beings be away from attachment, aversion, pride, jealousy, stupidity, bewilderment, ignorance, fear, hope, Etc., etc., etc. Duchi J. Aloha. Be well and have nice sleep tonight.